or the last week of the series for the or the course for proteogenomics introduction to proteogenomics so uh, till uh, previous week we have been uh, respective different genomics and the proteomics uh, technologies and how uh, we could see it so today we would uh, go through some much uh, more applications are uh, not restricting to only genomic sequences and the uh, proper protein sequences rather the rather the different modifications and their uh, roles uh, that how the different uh, modifications can also uh, modulate those things which can be known from this kind of studies from this kind of approaches along with that what are the different tools also available that can be useful for uh, an, uh, understanding along with the modifications like uh, phosphorylation and all those along with the in the uh, in your post translation modifications for the in the proteins as well as when you have the mutations in the genomic sequences what you can uh, what kind of things you can uh, know from it also the and finally we will conclude with one of the uh, recent article that have extensively done on this work of the proteogenomics work so that helps that will sum up that the importance of this study and will also help us in concluding uh, of whatever uh, course we have done and it will help us to understand the importance and the uh, implications of uh, proteogenomics so moving on so we had done we have studied about so we have talked about in detail that the pathways that are involved in due to different uh, signaling and different things so the identification of particular proteins and the genes so we do the statistical tests and uh, do a different uh, kinds of so we have also uh, discussed like the um, different machine learning algorithms like unsupervised learning or the supervised learning kind of things where we have seen that we are getting different markers that can be taken forward for our therapeutic kind of approaches diagnostic kind of approaches and different kinds of approaches but and so there are different ways that we can understand that what are the pathways that are perturbed in the disease condition and to understand that the to gain the insights regarding our disease systems so we uh, we can they do different kinds of pathway uh, pathway analysis so one was in the webgis uh, webgis sort we have seen that we can do a network topology analysis so we have discussed in previous week in detail that how our networks and all the networks can be created what are the different nodes what are edges what are trees how it can be represented all the hair balls that we get to see in the different manuscripts whenever you take so how to interpret those so we have uh, discussed that those in detail along with the networks we can have a we have discussed about the overt uh, representation analysis oda and the gsea that is the gene set enrichment analysis so the major differences so if so if you cannot recall so i will just uh, give a uh, i'll just uh, do it uh, uh, recall it up once more i in detail you can visit uh, those things and you can uh, look at it if you uh, if you don't recall it so in that over representation analysis it represents a particular set of genes that are over represented uh, which are coming up to your statistical analysis or those kinds of analysis and you have tried to identify the set of uh, differentially regulated proteins or the genes that are coming as uh, as uh, are representing a greater subset in a particular set of uh, pathway so that gives up your over representation analysis whereas if you go and say that uh, we can perform a gene set enrichment analysis where the gene sets are not the uh, differentially expressed uh, genes or the proteins rather your full set genes and proteins uh, normalized uh, data sets are able to see that how much are 
differentially uh, regulated or how much are the normalized uh, values are there. So, so what will happen is that we will we are getting the uh, differentially uh, regulated uh, differentially regulated. So on the basis of the normalized uh, data set, so it will count up that how much are uh, up regulated and down regulated of all the genes or the proteins that you give in the input from the different uh, for a particular pathway and then it will uh, do it accordingly. Whereas here it, we are getting so today what we are will be looking into one more. Uh, 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 so here what we are doing is that we are looking we will be looking at another set of GSEA. So in that previous weeks we have discussed all this in detail. So you can always have a go and have a look. So today we will be looking into the extended versions and other implications uh, what can be done in the proteogenomic studies and what some more kind of uh, what we can do is that in the uh, you can uh, I'll show you in that the major uh, publication recent publication which you will uh, sum up uh, accordingly. So this is SSGA or the single sample extension of the GSEA. So this is just the extension of gene set enrichment analysis. So what is that? So it defines you and enrichment score that represents your degree of absolute enrichment of a gene set in each sample with a given data set. So now we are, uh, so now what is the difference between the gene set and SSGSA? So if you go by the definition of GSEA so, and the SSGSA, now you can see that the definition is almost similar where the enrichment score defines you that how much it uh, the absolute enrichment of your particular gene set in uh, for that particular pathway is uh, uh, enriched or how much it is uh, highly showing up regulated. So for example, if uh, two a 25 genes uh, belongs to a particular pathway and your 13 or 14 genes are showing up regulated the same trend and others are uh, not showing the opposite trend. So then it will be that it is highly up regulated in your data set. So similar thing is there that of the enrichment score that represents your degree of absolute enrichment of a gene set in each sample within a given data set. So within a given data set, but of the sample in each sample, not the whole data set. So uh, whole data set in that thing, we were looking at the different cohorts might be your disease cohort, your uh, uh, low grade cohort, high grade cohort when whatever uh, the different grade one, grade two, so whatever you are doing uh, accordingly in the different uh, groups, so it was being looked upon as a whole. Now here it is given that in each sample within a given data set. So now how it is being calculated, so you can always uh, refer to this paper from uh, so where they have given the why they have used this kind of approach and how they have used uh, this kind of approach uh, in their uh, studies so that uh, you can definitely uh, look uh, up to it there. So now the gene expression values for a given sample. So how uh, it is done were ranked normalized and an enrichment score was produced using the empirical cumulative distribution function of the genes in the signature and in the remaining genes. So both in the signature, so whatever that signature pathways are there and the remaining genes which are not present for the signature. So now what is the algorithm of the single sample uh, extension of GSEA. So on not only you can restrict yourself to GSEA, NTA and the pathway based other things. So you can also do a single sample based uh, GSEA. So here what are the things that genes are replaced by their ranks according to their ab absolute expression from high to low. So how uh, that is being performed. So gene expression is termed, uh, is measured in terms of the, so if you are talking about units, so units 
you know that uh, we have discussed like fpkm rpkm that how uh, but in the proteomics it's a intensity of the relative absolute intensity of that uh, level of expression that how much it is there so in the transcriptomics data we take it in the form of your uh, rpkm and the fpkm which we had uh, discussed so is it answers your question okay so so genes will be replaced yes, by the ranks yeah so genes will be replaced by their ranks according to their absolute expression from high to low so whatever be it is there so one will be high and the star will be low so that is uh, there now how will you do is that now you will be calculating the enrichment score so that it is calculated by the sum obtained by some integration of the difference between your weighted ecdf empirical cumulative distribution function of the genes in your signature and the remaining genes so you can see in the signature and the remaining genes the minus summation of that so this is how your uh, that thing is calculated the enrichment score is calculated so now it is saying that the calculation is repeated for each signature and each sample in the data set so each signature so there are might be so now whatever what will determine your signature uh, so if you have gone through the gsea we when we had discussed so we had told so if you not I, after this slide i will show once more that the gsea contains our different msigdb database molecular signature database there are different pathways c1 pathway c2 curated k polymer cancer pathways other other different different pathways so all those pathway contains different different signature genes some contain signature genes of oncogene some contains for some uh, other uh, modifications etc etc which i will show it once again if you all uh, could not uh, cannot recall or something like that but i will uh, show it once more so what happens is that now that signature contains um, for example you have given one database which contains your 150 signatures so this enrichment score is calculated for each signature and each sample in the data set so on the gsea what was there is that only uh, whole uh, group enrichment score will be calculated once but here it is calculated for each sample in the data set okay so more why it is being done so what is the advantage of it uh, so if the question and the natural question comes out and what's the advantage for this kind of things so this is because it is more robust and sensitive than the kolmogorov pandor statistic so whatever this enrichment score calculation generally it is taken out uh, in the gsa that uses kolmogorov pandor statistic but here what happens is that when a small subset of genes attain high expression values it becomes very much accurate because gsa cannot able to uh, is not so much good and robust in identifying those subset of genes a small subset of genes becomes very much high express uh, shows high expressional values for certain kinds of your uh, uh, this thing for your certain kinds of uh, signature so this single sample based extension where the single samples are being calculated and repeated so then that coverage or the, the statistical power becomes increased and then we can get it okay fine so this is what the full algorithm is so you can always refer back to this paper for more information so if you want to have a much more detailed uh, thing about why this thing came and how uh, did they did it so you can always find it so i will just so once that mcdb that i was talking yeah yeah so we are taking that from where the signature will be uh, getting so this is the molecular signature databases so this is the gsa so here you can get like the hallmark gene sets 
powered by aggregating many enzymes gb genes to represent well defined biological states or processes so in this hallmark you have the hallmark like cancer and all those so c1 c2 so here you can get so regulatory target genes so according to your experiment and according to your expectation so what kind of analysis you want to do or what kind of data you want to predict or what you want to show uh, or check so then accordingly what you will do is that you will be getting all this results so this is where it is present so from here signatures so mostly the gene set enrichment analysis if you understand is nothing but gene set enrichment analysis is what that the gene sets which are enriched for a particular pathway in your data set now if it is calculated on single sample so that is the single sample extension of gsa that you can tell about ss gsa if it is on the whole data sets then it with gsa another thing what we have done is over representation analysis and the network uh, topology so you you all should understand it very well so i'll just make one thing try to make you all clear so the pathway enrichment because this is very much important in the context of your proteogenomics especially with the prote proteomics and the transcriptomic gene expression data whenever you do so if you whenever you do any kind of or whenever you get any kind of data so we have uh, shown you like the geo databases and the uh, where you can have your uh, data uh, uh, automatically you can have your data sets so what you can definitely uh, always try to do it out is that try to download those free source data and also we have given resources like sra toolkit and all and uh, the proteomics data you know that in the pride and all those things are there so you can always go and try to uh, find out your uh data sets and try to do the analysis if you want and if you have your own data or some other thing so that so definitely you can use this kind of analysis so if i tell you just i want you all to make the picture clear so if you all so pathway enrichment are of three types so you if you go and see in birgis salt also you will find it so over representation analysis or what it so that your picture becomes clear so what is then you have nta or network topology analysis and you have the gsa or the gene set enrichment analysis so now i guess you all can wait understand so the if you are asked like that that uh, whether ppi or the protein protein interactions come under which heading for these three so you, i am sure that you can understand that the ppi interactions or any interactions for that matter will come under definitely will come under network topology analysis so whatever kinds of networks protein protein interactions uh, protein and all so all those things so wherever the networks are formed so it will come under the network topology analysis so whenever just when you are doing so if i just give you one liner for each one of those things so whenever you do with a set of up regulated or down regulated genes or proteins so what you will do you will do with quad a right so now you can understand the difference so this you will do in quad a 
but when you will do a network topology analysis when you will to get a ppi or pathway network based pathways so then you will do a this thing when you have the gene set enrichment analysis and ssgca is nothing but the extension of gsca only so what will be that so it will be the gsa will be so gsa will be when you want to find the gene sets that are enriched for a particular signature the gene sets enriched for a particular signature you will be finding this thing so these are the three things over representation analysis network topology analysis and the gene sets uh, enrichment analysis so all these three are uh, very much powerful and have different functionalities and the different uh, their different mechanisms would help them to give you the accurate results it will depend upon what kind of objective you are taking or what kind of understanding you want to build through this kind of networks and the pathways yeah so moving on so now what we what i said in the beginning is that not only this kind of proteogenomics approaches help us in just only the genes uh, enrichment analysis or this kind of analysis like what we say is that uh, of uh, the proteome based analysis and all those things but we all know that these are not so much straight forward and these are not so much uh, like uh, what we generally try to predict so there are different modifications that also takes place uh, both in the dna level in the form of uh, mutations whereas in the protein uh, whereas in the protein level in the forms of uh, different post translation modifications so now what uh, so whether this gsca or ss gsca can be used for only this kind of analysis no the answer is no so the ptm sigdb is collection is also there so we have seen the molecular signature database which i just showed you that uh, in the signatures uh, in the signatures if i uh, meant uh, for your Uh, signatures so then it will be having your so it is uh, having your uh, particular things but generally what we can see that it contains also for the ptm signature databases or the ptm sig db where is your collection of your modification of site specific signatures of perturbations so you know that there is there is different oncogenes signal links like uh, keras krap rasrap so all those kind of oncogenic signaling things what it generally happens is that it all depends on your kinases and it all uh, modifies accordingly so what uh, it happens here so you can uh, see that the different uh, ptm sig uh, db database like the molecular signature databases what i just uh, showed uh, before so here what it does is that collection of or modification of the site specific signatures of perturbations kinetic activities and signaling pathways that had been curated from the uh, literature so this provides you the foundation for site specific ptm signature enrichment analysis so that is known as your ptm c or just like the gsa is there ptm sca ptm sca or PT, uh, like the gsa ptm sca is also one thing which you can perform so what you uh, what i meant to say is that so in the mass spectrometry based data set so mass spectrometry is so powerful that we can 
detect PTMs also. So I haven't uh, given uh, you uh, much idea about uh, um, much idea about how much uh, the, the PTMs can be identified in the especially in the sample preparation strategies. Though we had discussed regarding the instrumentation, so instrumentation remains quite the same. But if I tell you about the sample preparation strategies, if you want to measure the PTMs, then you need to identify, you need to perform some kind of enrichment strategies. So for example, if you want to do a phosphopeptide, so you need to have a uh, enrichment through either through TiO2 or you need to enrich it to through IMAP or immobilized uh, metal affinity chromatography. So you need to have some kind of enrichment strategies which will help you to enrich your phosphoproteins or the phosphopeptides. So what are we trying to say is that if you enrich those peptides and run in the mass spectrometry, then it will be built to detect your phosphocytes. And then you need to have, so there are different uh, soft, uh, websites and the resources. So we haven't talked much about the phosphorylation and all, but I will... Uh, uh, tell you in uh, brief now. So there are uh, many websites, so you can definitely go and search. Uh, so in fact, I can show you as well. That will be better. So which through which you can. So after a dedicated analysis, when you are run in the mass spec and got the PTM data, so then you will be running in the different search parameters like max squared or pd or others uh, or other software and get the phosphocytes then you will try to match that the phosphocytes at the sty how much are there so these are the resources some of those like the phosphocyte plus where you can have the uh, what i say that if i say uh, that the positions where the phosphorylation can happen so the modification types, so you can see. So here uh, you will try to match it with the uh, uh, known uh, resources like this one, Phosphocyte Plus and all those, and also try to find out the uh, localization probabilities. So then you can, what you can do, so what I can do is that I can share, show you this. So, you can, so we have a paper on this thing, so. Yes, so this. You can. So here you can go to uh, find out the procedure for both sample preparation. So if you are interested, you can go and search for your uh, sample preparation as well as how the analysis have been done. So here you can find out that uh, uh, different methods. Okay, so the different uh, methods. So the different methods where you will be uh, 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 getting your uh, uh, what you say that the how the analysis has been done where you have got the particular uh, uh, what I say that particular phosphocyte is being detected phosphopeptide is being detected uh, so then what will happen is that once you uh, get your phosphocyte so then you will do the Try to find out that what is the probability on the basis of the different resources and the literature and the studies at the particular uh, site at which it is uh, being mentioned is actually uh, containing your is actually containing your answer. Yeah, so what is the actual condition that what is the uh, probability of that position to be a phosphocyte that serine threonine or tyrosine 
and then finally you will be doing that accordingly so you can go as i showed you the paper so you can definitely go and search for the sample preparation strategy and the analysis strategy so now what here what we are focusing on is that once you get your ptms ready uh, from the mass spec data so then you can do a ptm uh, enrichment analysis similar to the gsea using ptm sig db so that gives you an added advantage okay so this is a ptm sig db collection which you can definitely go and try out so now we had uh, discussed in quite brief uh, just touched upon in the previous class uh, what i uh, can remember so that that predicting the impact of the mutation so what is that so uh, mutations so now we were looking at the post transcription modifications and how those enrichment analysis uh, shows us the different pathways and all but now what we are trying to look at is the predicting the impact of the mutations on the kinase related substrates like this is how much it is going to relate on the kinases or the kinase substrate phosphorylation so here you can see Yeah, so what you can see that here phosphorylation happens protein regulation is normal or it is happening but if there is a loss or gain or due to the mutation for example here you can see that there is a mutation this is normal protein shape here uh, is denoting normal but here it's mutation so now if there is a loss or gain and if rewired then what is the so whether this mutation has an impact or not most so if the mutation has impact the regulation won't happen if the impact has no impact then it will happen the regulation will happen so this prediction can be done with the tool of mim so i think we have discussed in quite brief so let us today look at it Okay, so here you can. So let's get that started. So here, what we will do is that we will load sample data. So you can load your own data. So nothing such a sequence data. So you know that from where we can get the sequence, right? So if you go to Uniprot and if you search for any particular protein. what you will find out you will get a series of uh, all the sequences of the particular protein you can uh, get uh, from uh, definitely you can uh, uh, definitely you can get from uh, your uh, particular what you say that uh, uniprot so that is the thing so tp53 protein sequence if this is faster sequence i think you can identify it easily so these are faster sequence so what are the mutations data that you are given so you know the mutation so from where you will know the mutations from the genomic data so we just now you can uh, see the integration in the application level for the proteogenomics so you can see that the whatever these things can be uh, integrated and can be looked upon here so you can say that uh, manually input phosphorylation sites so you can give 33 to 84 to 53 or 
or you can say that all the sty residues as potential phosphorylation sites either you can give it this so what i uh, just said like that resources like phosphosite plus and all those why i mentioned so that from there you can get the references of what are the inputs phosphorylation sites can be what are the possible phosphorylation sites for a particular protein so, uh, so then you can manually input it in that if you are not sure then you can say that use all sty residues in my sequences this is one way another way is that whatever phosphorylation sites have been identified in your data set so that is going to be most important or more crucial this is because what uh, why i am saying that it is more crucial if i if you get in from the uh, data set this is because that whatever you will be getting or whatever you will be uh, identifying uh, from your uh, data sets uh, or your whatever I was supposed to tell you that uh, this your data set that is will be more reliable and more effective way of doing it because that you are doing it on the basis of a study that is you are disease condition or your some treatment condition. So on the basis of the study, what you are doing is that you are identifying your particular uh, data, data set. What are the different phosphorylation sites that have been modified uh, for that particular disease condition? What are the particular phosphorylation sites that have been added or edited or got deleted? So all those things, when you get from your mass spectrometry based data, then you can put it on that for particular for that particular protein. Now specify your model data, individual kinase models, kinase family models, predicted individual kinase models. You can go for kinase family models. So advanced options you can go like the probability threshold. Okay, so you can accordingly adjust to it. Include central residue. Scan it. So here you can probability threshold of gain or loss events, only events with probabilities of above this value are written. So it will depend upon how stringent you want to make or how relaxed you want to make. Threshold of the absolute between the wild type and the mutant score or events with absolute probabilities above this values are retained. Scan for events caused by mutation in the central phosphorylation residue. So here you can reduce it like one above one. Yeah. So you can put some it. Yeah. Probability, score weight effect is loss so loss or gain so loss 14 gain 0 3 mutations so 3 mutations is leading to your 14 losses that is being predicted from this data so from the mutations data that is available from your genomics data set the uh, mass spectrometry based phosphorylation data that is present from your proteomics data set and the sequence of that particular protein with uh, so that if you give so whether it has gained or whether it has lost, whether the function is of gain or the loss, that is being reported here, that you can generate from here. Okay, so here you can see the sequence logo. So we have also discussed in detail, right? The sequence logo and all. So if you remember that the how the phosphorylation can be uh, can be uh, done over the expression, regular expression, fuzzy matching, if you all remember all those things. Uh, that, uh, what is, uh, what uh, what was that? Uh, the small uh, sequence uh, that the domain and the motifs, how they are mentioned and the sequence logo, this S means how much uh, on the what letter code. So all these things we have discussed. So you can search. So in that motifs and domains, I had given uh, the a brief overview of that as well for better understanding uh, of those concepts of the concepts of motifs and domains. So here you can see the sequence uh, logo is there and all those things. So here you can see the effects are all of loss in which genes and the proteins are there. 
so in this way you can uh, with your data you can play over as well as you can just load samples and here you can try with this and you can try to find out so gain here you can find out that you have one gain okay so you can find it out here gain loss and the mutation yeah so this is for the mean so now if you if we just look at it what is the actual meaning of it so it, if you predicting loss and gain of phosphorylation so what which is happening is that mimp characterizes your genetic variants such as cancer mutations that specifically alter your kinase binding sites in proteins that specifically alter uh, kinase binding sites in proteins all these residues are changed in disease mutations so whenever uh, in your disease condition the different mutations happen so these alterations in kinase binding specificity potentially lead to rewiring of kinase substrate interruption network so it rewires of some kinds of things that happen so comprehensive kinase substrate data is that so mim means you makes use of your phosphorylation data for a wide range of kinases to comprehensively predict kinase rewiring mutations kinase specificity models are refined to remove sequences not matching the general motif and improve prediction power so that's why it is removing and the different models are given so that you can get the exact data and so that's why we have also discussed regarding the motifs and all those things so that you can understand or interpret the data easily so this was for the thing so we have looked at it yeah so now again we will just go into the active driver these also we had discussed in brief uh, in the previous class yeah so here we need to look into it details so what i felt is that it is also an application and implication of the different this approaches so all these tools help us in understanding and help us in better uh, of this data so once you are uh, make the samples ready and, and they have analyzed your data set so now then you need to interpret it in a much better way so this is the sequence view you can see the network view experimental network view mim predicted so this is integrated into it so which you can make use of it to understand so see here you can all so you you uh, you can all definitely go and play over here 
to understand and to use different ptm sites and all so they so not only phosphorylation you can have glycosylation methylation etc etc so all those things are there the different cancers so this all you can play accordingly whenever if you are interested and if you want to uh, take it forward you can uh, definitely do that and take it forward but here we are just looking and providing you the resources from where you can uh, go ahead and use it so this is for example we are giving you the firstly they are giving it the uh, uh, full form of uh, full summary of the protein description that what is the protein what is the chromosome what is this thing or the three isoforms kinase ptl heads of proteins network so what are the external references ref say can trace uniprot ensemble so meanwhile it is giving the ptm interaction network visualization so since it is being generated from me it will take some time and then it will provide you so accordingly you can choose your filters and can use it so also this all gives you your uh, what what i said is that uh, you can get you all get uh, your data what is that data so uh, you all generally get uh, definitely that sample data through which you can try out you can get the knowledge at how this looks like as well as so how it will look like and also with the model data you can get it so you can see you can go and find out the different uniforms isoforms as well So let us try to see at the if we can generate some network view. What we can do is that we can try to select a version. yeah so let us uh, move ahead so i think you can understand so sometimes this server even busy and all those things yeah so it was coming
yeah now it came it actually take some time to build the network so we in the network topology of web result also it take some time so because you can understand it is giving you all the finest junctions atms and then it is giving you the sites and then the drugs so see so you can get it all so it will take some time but it will come for the this also so let us wait a little bit time more time so meanwhile let us I thought that we can uh, little bit interpret uh, that thing as well. So these are all very good uh, useful resources. Yes, if you go there and try to find so CTNNV1. So this is the preferred form of isoform. So see, you can easily just take this image, download it, and whatever your data you've got, and you can just go ahead for publication as well. So let's see if it is coming. So then it will be a good uh, uh, this thing integration of MIMP and Active Driver DB. Yeah, it's taking uh, much more time, so we will see it at the later stages if it is forming. Yeah, so now moving on uh, to the next thing. So what uh, we were telling about the GSEA and all those things. So now another there is a file format. So what is why this file format is required? So for analysis of your uh, so it is a uh, whenever we do we are saying that uh, for the GSEA, so you will see that they require you to give you a GCT file. Okay, so what is this GCT file? So if you try to do GSEA and if it is asking for uh, GCT file, so you should understand that what is this GCT file. So GCT file format is nothing but it is known as a gene cluster text file format so white uh, gene uh, cluster uh, text uh, file format so this so this gives us the information about those particular genes so what it's by definition it is telling is that that the tab delimited text file format that is convenient for analysis of matrix compatible data sets as it allows you metadata about an experiment to be stored alongside the data from the experiment. So you can see that. So let us go here so we can keep our track also if that gets ready or we can 
try it out. So meanwhile, we can go to the GC. Yeah, so what is this GCT? Is your tab limited text file format that is convenient for your analysis of matrix compatible data sets as it allow your metadata about an experiment to be stored alongside the data from your experiment. So this enables storing both your row and column metadata. Each column represents a specific experiment. Example is your treatment of your cell line. MCF7 or any cell line for that matter with a small molecule drug and each row represents features that are measured in the assay. Two main formats GCT text and GCTX. So this is uh, opened in a spreadsheet. So you can see the CGS, TS, uh, but uh, dose, gin symbol, DMSO, these are all those uh, things for the cell culture and the drug treatment ex uh, experiment. So these are the different genes. So the first file contains the version string. The second line indicates the dimension such that the first number is the uh, number of rows in the data matrix. The second number is the number of columns in the data matrix. The third number is the number of row metadata fields. And fourth number is the number of column metadata fields. So this must be unique in the example for us. Reads and entries ID for the genes for unique identifiers for unique form protein. So these are some of the technicalities. Okay, so this is the GCT. So nothing much more. Just you have the genes, all those metadata information along with the data. So what is this metadata information here? These are the metadata information. So what it contains, it contains that what is the experiment given, what is the uh, name, what is that uh, different uh, treatments and what is the things uh, that are measured in the assay. So this contains uh, this kind of format or the GCT format. What happens is that uh, it gives you the information of both uh, the metadata experiment and the data along with it. So metadata plus data. So both of this information are there in the same place. So that's why it is uh, known as your, uh, uh, what you say, uh, that uh, particular uh, GCT file format, gene cluster text. Yes, yeah, so it is taking much more time. So let us see it now. Yeah, it's coming, it's coming. So let us try it out with some other proteins as well. Right. So we have uh, now changed in one protein and see if we can visualize it. Yeah, so these are the lollipop plots which shows you the sequences with the phosphorylation sequences. So again, you can get all those informations. Somebody. So I would urge you all to go and try to play it with uh, the then only you will become understand it much more better way and also you can understand through different approaches here. Yeah. So this is the thing. So let's see if we can get it here or otherwise we have to understand that there is some issue with their integration and the software uh, servers or there are some issues which is not throwing up. That's why it is not throwing up the data.
Okay, so there's some issue with the servers, I guess. Okay, so we have gone through understanding of the GCT file also, but, but why I have given this you? So because you can see in the GSE file, so they will be writing that the, you, you might give the GCT file or the RDS file. So what is this GCT file? So you can understand. So now another things which uh, which helps us in, in analyzing multi-omics data within and across actual cancer type. So which was again uh, of the broad institute of uh, Dr. Bing Zeng's lab is a linked omics, which is again very much useful like your meme for a certain set of thing. Active driver DB, what we are looking is for a certain set of things. Similarly, linked omics is for analyzing multi omics data within and across 32 cancer types. So you can So what you can do is that you all can either register or you can log in as a guest as well. Yeah, so this is so across the so, you, uh, so we have discussed like the TCGA, PWCAG and the CPTAC. So all this consortium is playing a huge role in understanding the genomics and the proteomics and the multiomics data. So for the 32 cancer types for the different TCGA data sets, so we they have used for the analyzing this thing. So there is another uh, I am hopeful that I've shown you like the uh, that's like cosmic and all those things are there. So similarly, C bio portal. So I think in the second or third week, so I might have shown you C bio portal for the cancer genomics. So similarly, but the C bio portal gives you the only the genomics version that is your uh, mutations and all those things. So link omics is, is giving you the uh, all the multi omics and integration of those. That's why it is known as linked omics. So C bio portal is for your cancer genomic study. So similarly, linked omics is for your uh, this thing. So this I think we had discussed. So you can go through it and see. So here, if I go to the linked omics, so you can select your cancer type. Okay, select search data set. So these are optional, so we can skip it. Yes, so you can select your attributes accordingly. So you can do the Pearson correlation test. So what is there? So this is nothing. So if you got confused, so I'll show you one by one again. So it is nothing but just the linking between one omics data set and another. What are the different correlation is there? So 
so if we want to know the population or how much it is being so how much it's common so that so let just show you again so if you got confused yeah select cancer code so you will select one particular cancer for example you want to select that the aml cancers patients age so aml is you know is a leukemia or it is a not a solid tumor it's a cancer of blood cancer along with the glioblastoma which is a brain tumor which is a solid tumor so if you want to see find what is the uh, correlation between the ages of the patients that have been uh, that you have got uh, that have been diagnosed with the blood cancer with a solid tumor with a kind of an aggressive uh, tumor so what is the thing so you will select your cancer code select your data set search your attribute like your bmi age gender whatever you want to find out you the target data set and then the statistical cohort or or i think here you can uh, cross uh, verify or cross check the correlation between the particular two data sets of that particular cancer cohort only so this is what it is there in the uh, link domains okay so what is they are they are telling so we will again look into that like aml one cohort another cohort so whatever correlation and what we can get to it so here you can see the tcga data and uh, cp tag data so what link finder does within and cross omics associations so within and your cross omics associations link interpreter pathway and your network analysis link compare multi omics and pan cancer analysis so this is it pan cancer analysis and multi omics pathway and network analysis and the within and from uh, cross omics association so from the tcg and the cpct cpdc data so let us look at each of the module that has been presented by link omics so the link finder module allows you so the linked finder module what it does it allows for flexible exploration of associations between a molecule or clinical attribute of interest and all other attributes for a selected cancer cohort so the analysis can be performed using all samples within the selected cohort or a subset of samples such as basal breast cancer so what is saying that the link finder module allows you for flexible exploration of associations between your molecular or clinical attribute of interest and all other attributes for selected cancer cohort the analysis can be performed using all samples within the selected cohort or a subset of samples such as your basal breast cancer so associations between a query attribute and all target attributes in the user defined subspace such as rb1 mutation so now here by reading this you can understand that what are the different associations that you can search in your linked omics so such as your rb1 mutation versus your mrna expression so what is the correlation or the association between your mutation and your expression level so rb1 mutation so rb1 mutation and mrna expression in your bladder cancer or erb2 bb2 amplification versus your protein phosphorylation in breast cancer are calculated using appropriate statistical test depending on the data types of t2 attributes so if you see that the rrb1 application mutation versus mrna expression in bladder cancer or erb2 amplification versus protein phosphorylation in breast cancer so all these are integration of your genomics and the proteomics data so the thing that we are uh, saying or we are studying of the proteo uh, genomics so you can see that the erb2 bb2 amplification versus protein phosphorylation in your 
breast cancer are calculated using appropriate statistical tests depending on the type of types of the two attributes so statistical tests in link finder includes your pearson's correlation coefficient spearman's rank correlation students t test wilcoxon t test analysis of variance crystal wall test fisher's exact test so also we have discussed this test like the fisher's exact test uh, chi square test so if you all remember the lady testing the t problem uh, so when it is not your uh, when the data is your binary when you are try to answer on the basis that a, a certain set of uh, samples is doing then if you want to predict when a population so then you try to do the fisher's exact test so hopefully you all remember it otherwise please go, go back and, and check it for the different big uh, things so you can definitely uh, get to it uh, john chicky's trend test box regression analysis etc etc so all these things are very much uh, useful uh, for your uh, you can find it out so this uh, with this test it can uh, find you it finds you the links so multiple test correction is performed uh using the benjamini hodgeberg method to generate the false discovery rate so benjamini hodgeberg test is done to the false discovery rate so we have also discussed in great detail regarding it which says that your ranks you calculate the p values in the ranks and then try to uh, find out so each link finder query returns your uh, returns your statistical rest test results for all target attributes and uh, in uh, both of tabular format and your volcano plot so which you can look up on it so data for top ranking attributes are visualized in heat map result for each can be visualized by scatter plot box plot or survival curve plot depending on the data types of query and target attributes opportunity to analyze and visualize association between billions of attribute pairs for each cancer cohort so the next is the link compare module So the link compare module, what it does is that it enables you the easy comparisons of the associations identified by link finder with different query attributes on the same target data set. Example, proteins associated with KRAS mutation versus BRAF mutation in uh, colorectal cancer or with the same query attribute on target data sets from different omics platforms. Examples, genes associated with overall survival in low parent cancer copy number versus uh, proteomics data sets so all these things what we were interested in analyzing or understanding it so what we were uh, saying uh, from the proteogenomics point of view which was uh, which is quite uh, important then the tumor type genes associated with overall survival in multiple cancer types tumor subtypes mrna subtypes with twist one phosphorylation in er positive and er negative risk tumors when two sets of association data are compared, a scatter plot is used to visualize the overall correlation between the two and the Venn diagram and heat map are used to compare significant. So one is your link finder. So from the name of the modules, each of the modules, you can easily understand that what it denotes or what it signifies. So one is trying to find you the link between the two. One another thing is that where you are trying to compare the links. So when two sets of association data are compared, a scatter plot is used to visualize the overall correlation between the two and the Venn diagram and the heat map are used to compare and contrast the significant associations. A meta analysis using the sums method in the meta peer package prioritize target attributes showing strong and consistent associations. Then is the link interpreter module where if that uh, module transforms the associations identified by your link finder and link compare into biological understanding. So this is the thing. So whatever you find out the link finder or the link compare module. So you are trying to do the link interpreter module. So it interprets in the uh, biological things. So the module performs gene set and pathway analysis using both your overall representation analysis so here all these things so that's why we, we have discussed in detail like the over representation analysis and the gene set enrichment analysis so that 
now you all can easily understand that whatever what it means and you can uh, you does not have to think of that uh, uh, what to do or what to how to take it forward so through access in the comprehensive functional category database uh, so in web default link interpreter inter individual evaluates functional enrichment uh biogene ontology cake panther reactom wiki pathways as well as protein protein interactions so all things we have uh, looked into it so now let us again go back to the link uh, link to mix so now we know so we have some background of what are the things what are the things that we can do so what are the modules are there so one module is your link finder module what then is your uh, link compare module then you have the link interpreter module so now let us try back the link to mix and then try to find out that where we are heading to so we will go for the new analysis fine so now what we know there are three modules so okay so let us take adenocortical carcinoma so this thing yellow thing happened now search data set which data set to search so let us take this one search data set attribute what attribute to take it forward so they are giving this only now what is the target data set so let us take this thing so so they are according to the whatever data present and absent in the link to mix you are getting the different things so here you can do either anova or kruskal wallis so when to do anova when to do kruskal wallis so both are doing for the multi group testing but generally it is being done so if the data set we are not sure of the parametric and the non parametric we will go with the kruskal wallis and then we will submit our query yeah so so meanwhile it is going on so uh, previous one which we had already done so that's why i did it so that meanwhile this will be doing so uh, in that time i am sure that you were confused so what is happening so once we went through the literature in a deep way so i think it is now clear that it is telling your one thing is your linked uh, link comics link the finder and the link interpreter so now when we found the results so see so what we had read that at the heat map and the volcano plot so you can see the link finder association result for the target gene or attribute okay so these are like the volcano plots and these are the negatively correlated significant genes positively correlated significant genes you can easily find out from link to mix this is still happening
let it be done. So please don't reload page loading. Yeah, so now let us go to link interpreter. So for this comparison, we're showing the link interpreter. So this software is that uh, so which you can download and use as well. So which we generally do it. Download and use it. Sometimes it takes much more time, so this becomes uh, difficult. Twenty to forty seconds or one thousand. So it will give the results. So in this way, you can go through different modules and can find it out in the link to mix. Accordingly, you can do that. OK, so I'm hopeful that I'm clear and you can. Go and find it. So the next thing what I told that we will sum up uh, our this uh, course uh, for this introduction to protein genomics. So with one example, uh, so in the start on the beginning in the week one also I showed uh, one paper which showed you the implications of the uh, how it is being used and it is being that deadly diseases like 
including aggressive brain tumors and aggressive cancer or real diseases. All this can be addressed through proteogenomic approaches. So this is a very recent paper. With, they have done the multi-omics with the proteogenomic and metabolic characterization of the human uh, glioblastoma. So which you can find out. So what the things they have mentioned and what we can get. So before going into this paper, so I'll just give an overview of today what we have done so that and then we will look at it and then we will conclude the full uh, course for the introduction to proteogenomics what we have learned till the twelfth week. So today we have done the single sample uh, extension of GSEA gene set enrichment analysis where we have uh, uh, looked at the GSA where we use the enrichment score using the single sample there because this gives us the small subset of uh, genes which are very much highly enriched for a particular subset we get it here so that's the thing second is that how the enrichment calculation is done uh, using the algorithm of the SS uh, GSA where the ranks are calculated and the enrichment score is calculated and further it is taken forward so pathway enrichment we have discussed in the two classes uh, in uh, great detail which mentions about the world representation analysis, uh, network uh, topology analysis and the genset enrichment analysis. Followed by then we have the PTM6 uh, database, not only the molecular signature database but the PTM6 database with which we can uh, go ahead and try to find out like the first transcription modification signatures. So then is the meme where we have can predict the impact of the mutations like predicting the impact of mutations on the kinase uh, substrate phosphorylations. Then predicting the loss and the gain of phosphorylation like meme we have seen that how the effect of the mutations that the gain or loss uh, so which we have demonstrated uh, with the sample data which you all also can try to play with it and if you have your own data you can try to find out where you need to give an input of the faster sequence and the genes and the known the phosphorylation sites either you can give all phosphorylation sites or if you know that data with the and also i have shown you the resource like the phosphocyte plus there are some websites where you can go also i have uh, shown you the paper where you can definitely go and try to find out the sample preparation for the post transcription modifications like phosphorylations if you want to study and if you want to enrich the peptides and the protein uh, for that matter. Uh, 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 second, uh, that whether uh, whether we, we can uh, do that uh, the like the predict the kinase uh, rewiring uh, mutations which the specificity uh, models like the uh, which you can uh, try to find out like the different kinase substrate uh, interaction networks to remove uh, sequences and then the motifs so you can you have seen uh, that what are the different motifs are there and how can improve the prediction uh, power. So in the scanning the sequences for which we have uh, shown in the demonstration which we have done it. Then the active driver DB. So this provides a very good comprehensive active driver like the uh, what are the mutations are there and uh, how you can say have seen the interaction map like the phosphorylation then with the drug and with all those things. Then the GCT format or the RES format for the uh, GS gene set enrichment analysis. And then it's a link to mix, uh, which gives you to an analyzing the multi omics data and which contains the three modules. So link finder modules, which you can uh, go through it. Then the link compare module and then the link interpreter module. So I have just uh, we have seen that how it all works. So now so 
this was all so any question till now from any from anywhere you want to ask uh, so generally so we are now looking at one example and then we will uh, close this uh, session uh, and all these things so this is for the proteogenomic and the metabolomic characterization of the human glioblastoma so let us look at the paper directly itself so it will be Okay, so why I thought of giving you this uh, thing so that you all appreciate uh, that what we have done through this uh, uh, these two three months and why we have emphasized on understanding these two techniques and why so many tools are there to and why the consortium like TCGS EPTAC are there uh, have been built up to expedite to understand this kind of deadly diseases and help in further things. So see, you can see, so so that's why I just thought of reading uh, in, to you directly in the paper so you can understand from the, so I would again suggest and recommend you all to go back and read uh, it at once, uh, at least if you cannot understand it. I am hopeful that after all these classes, you would be able to understand the different graphs, different heat maps, uh, different uh, things. So accordingly, I think you can uh, go through it. So, so you can see that the GBM is that most aggressive uh, nervous uh, system cancer. So you can know that it is very much aggressive, very much lethal, and it uh, the survival rate for the patients uh, the undergoing it is only in the range uh, is only three months to six months that goes uh, there. So understanding its molecular pathogenesis is crucial to improving diagnosis and treatment and integrated analysis of your genomic, proteomic, PTMs, metabolomic data. So helped you to insights into the GBM biology. So they identified key phosphorylation events. So from these papers, if you go through these papers, then you all can try to uh, like from here you can go in uh, active driver TV. So reading all these papers will give you much more information. So if you are interested in any of these things, you all can try one. So see, activated PTPN1. So what I did, just I went here, and I will now see here what is the thing across the cancers and all. So this you can visualize. So these are the simple things. So knowing all these uh, tools and techniques will definitely help you in understanding that, okay, you can, uh, whatever you are looking at, you can go and try to search and identify it. So what you can see as potential switches mediated oncogenic pathway activation as well as, as, well as your potential targets for EG, EGFR, TP53 and RB1 altered tumors. So next is that immune subtype. So always we follow certain kinds of uh, gradation system based on histopathology and all those things and uh, World Health Organization uh, classifications. But always, all those things cannot uh, distinguish your tumor or uh, discriminate that. So, for that reason, we need to understand that if there are other subtypes with, uh, uh, other cells. So, then we can uh, do this uh, type of things. So, we can understand that the distinct immune cell types like the bulk omics methodologies 
so immune six uh, subtypes they could identify uh, validated by SN RNA seq correlated with specific expression and histonosaturation patterns. Classical and immune low GBM is given by DIG. So different genes, different signatures, immune type subtypes. So all these things. Uh, so so what is this highlight is that this work highlights biological relationships that could contribute to stratification of GBM patients for more effective treatment. So this is quite important. So this kind of multi-genomics analysis can help you to understand or stratify the GBM patients for more effective treatment, which is not possible otherwise. So the most common primary management mentor with roughly, so you can see, so you can go through it. So I'll just go through the result section. So proteogenomic and metabolomic features delineate molecular subtypes of lyoblastoma. I'm just going uh, over the view of your whatever the findings uh, the authors could do on the basis of your uh, data of the proteogenomics and the metabolomics, rather the multiomics characterizations. So they could find out the uh, proteogenomic landscape and the different kinds of mutations and all those things they could identified. Then driver genetic alterations influence your oncogenic protein abundance and your uh, phosphorylation. So they could find out the oncogenic protein abundance. What are the different protein abundance that is there and what is the phosphorylation levels of the status. Then moving on. So these are all the different genes and the different things which uh, are identified. So RTK signaling cascades are activated in your GBM. So what is RTK? You know that the receptor tyrosine kinases. So we have already shown you in the smaller scales. Uh, if you have the mutation, so what are the effect on the kinases? You can definitely go and uh, read and search there. So distinct immune marker expression. So this is quite important, which was not known previously. So different distinct immune marker expression and epigenetic events that characterizes your GBM immune subtypes. Then mesenchymal tumor and microenvironment character. So the uh, tumors becomes uh, like the epithelial cells becomes like the mesenchymal uh, characteristics and what are the uh, micro environment uh, characteristics that can happen. Then the differential uh, acetylation of histone proteins associated with specific your uh, subtypes and your pathways. Then the lipid composition and metabolomic features associated with your uh, GBM subtypes. So what are the, those things? And the key of oncogenic pathways and the therapeutic opportunities. So finally, you can get the better and the best major therapeutic opportunities that can you can take it forward. And finally, you can see. So these are the immense uh, scope. You can obviously you can understand. So if you just glance over the glance over the figures, you can understand the types of information that we can generate from this kind of studies, from this kind of analysis, which can help us in characterizing this kind of deadly diseases to a greater extent, and can help us in. Uh, generating precision medicine, personalized medicine in near future uh, that can become a reality. So you can, uh, you know that today's world, your artificial intelligence, all those machine learning approaches are taking place. So all these things will be incorporated in these uh, things as well. And we will surely be hopeful that one day we will be having those personalized medicine and the precision medicine, precision therapeutics without with minimal uh, side effects, effective treatments, all these things uh, uh, assisted by your drug delivery systems. So if we can know the 
precise target we can know the delivery precise delivery we can definitely achieve all those things and all uh, will help us uh, in near future so you can see so th this is just a summary the figure one just gives you the proteogenomic summary of the cohort so proteogenomic summary you can understand for a particular disease so all these things can be known like the mutations post progressions uh, post transition modifications etc etc et all those things can be easily known at a so, so of the 10 data types generated in this study so they are, they generated along uh, around 10 data types so showing the tumor mutation burden structural variants fusions and cnbs etc so of uh, multi omics clustering of uh, tumor samples then followed then followed by your cnv expression protein phosphorylation abundance so all these figures summarizes your each and every study they have performed and also summarizes in a way the whatever studies uh, we can perform and that can be uh, taken forward for our analysis and for our uh, further understanding so i'll just glance over you over the images which have been uh, there so you can always uh, go back and uh, do this thing so then the scenes and trans effect of uh, the of the mutations what happens then the rna and the protein expression correlation uh, cis and trans uh, effects on the abundances the mrna abundance and the protein uh, correlations so differentially expressed proteins so all these things you can uh, uh, go through it then Then alterations in the RTKs or the receptor tyrosine kinases, structural variants, fusions, mutations. Uh, so what are the fusions and what is the expression level? So all these things, if we uh, proteomic as, uh, association and the fossil proteomic association and the correlation between your. So you can understand that whole picture view you can uh, they have tried to identify and understand. Similarly, we can do it. Uh, in, uh, in if we do multi-omics, so we can uh, definitely understand in this manner. Otherwise, in the using proteogenomics also, we can understand to a great extent. So in the first figure, as I mentioned that, as I showed you, uh, that there you can get a, a huge amount of information, which can be quite useful uh, for our uh, further any kind of analysis and the different tools that we mentioned uh, throughout you can definitely of your interest studies uh, if you go through it uh, this kind of papers and uh, the most important thing is that uh, uh, link to mix or c bio portal whatever we have uh, mentioned and also we mentioned today so these all contains your predefined uh, uh, pre uh, stored pre uploaded sets of your tcg and the cp tag data which contains information of this kind of your genomics and the proteomics data. So you can definitely uh, go through it and have certain kinds of association studies and the mutations, uh, which I just, uh, just now showed you so from the chromosome point of view, from the RNA correlation and those protein abundances. Also in the linked omics, you have uh, these three modules, linked interpreter and the linked uh, finder which you can do it uh, uh, for your interest and for your analysis for your particular thing. Uh, if you cross uh, come across any kind of genes or any kind of diseases through which you want to study, you can uh, do that. So this is the you can see that the, they could identify the immune subtypes and the different kinds of stratifications which was not able to uh, do it with your standard or uh, normal uh, uh, classification so the stratification so if you need to have the immune marker expression and the different kinds of enrichment things so they had done that and then we have the two more figures one for the lipids and the metabolomics which gives you the classification 
and finally the different mutation and all the subtests and the oncogenic pathways and all. Yeah, so this I think uh, sums up that what is the holds the potential of the multi omics technique and also leads to the end of our course as of now for the proteogenomics. So do you all have any question? Otherwise, 